if you could live your life judgment-free? Are you ready to live the unapologetic, confident life God designed for you? Then this is the place to be. Welcome to the Bold, Brave, and Sassy Show. It's time to break free of physical, spiritual, and heart-centered challenges that have held you back for way too long. Listen in for fun and powerful tips and tools to help you break free today. Hear from our leading experts, along with me, Annie Berryhill, your host and personal guide to freedom. Now it's time to live like no one's judging. Let's go. Hey there, everybody. This is Annie Berryhill, and welcome to the Bold, Brave, and Sassy Show. I'm so happy that you've joined me today. I have a really, really special dare I say, electric guest today. I have Miss Katie Walker. And before we start yakking away, I want to take a little time to introduce you to her through her bio and her background. So Katie graduated from Louisiana State University, which I think you're going to be able to hear when you you hear her talk. (laughs) And she's been an active participant and a fundraiser with Major League Baseball because her husband also was a Major League Baseball player for 12 years and working a lot with the Boston Red Sox and the Chicago Cubs, which is cool because my husband also played for those teams. Katie has a, a love of acting and she's always been drawn to projects that portray a purpose and a message, especially those that equip and encourage the Malay Kyle Clements. She writes daily devotionals for social media outlets and is the host of Insight Scene, a social media entertainment platform encouraging women in their daily life. So she is a mover and a shaker. Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Shake it up with you. Yep, that's <laughs> always happening around here. We, we got a lot of these ladies who are making it happen. And so I yeah. love it. It's so fun to be with other women like that. So this is really fun. Katie and I didn't know each other until really a couple weeks ago because we were connected through a mutual friend, which is really, really cool. And it right. even just the baseball thing works out really well. So one of the things that was not mentioned in your bio, which I think is going to be hugely important for us to talk about today, is your book. You just released a book. Tell us about it. I did. It was May 1st. I released a book that's called Woman of Influence. And I love to tell how it started because if you knew my background, you would know by knowing me that I'm not a writer. I would plainly see it All of my English scores would say, you don't write. And my English teachers would say, "Uh, that's not going to be the future writer. So everything in my past would just say, you are not qualified. And I was dropping, I have four children, and I was dropping them off at school one day for this, being a host of Insight Scene, we do two-minute video vlogs, like a video blog. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about what am I going to say today? What's a good, um, something that's encouraging and inspiring to other women. And all of a sudden I heard the Holy Spirit ask me a question. And he said, why do you think that Satan gave the apple to Eve and not Adam? And I, I literally driving on the interstate, I just thought, I don't think I've ever asked myself that question. It's a good one. And I just sat there, right? I, I just sat there because it's almost like sometimes when you, when you get asked that question, it's not for you to answer. It's because he's about to download an answer. Mm-hmm. And he said, or in my spirit, I'll right. just say that I, that I felt like he said, because I created women to influence. Mm. They are great. They are born with the influence. How are you influencing? How are you influencing? Because I've given women the power. Hmm. That is really powerful. It's interesting yeah. too, because not too long ago, I had a conversation with someone who actually had a dream and it was very, very, very vivid. And it was actually a project around Eve wow. for me to do. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's a very important piece of it. That, I, that's so cool mm-hmm. that you said, because when you, when you started saying that, I was like, Uh, my mouth dropped open. And it's so true. Like women don't understand, maybe they do, or they, they discount it. I think is maybe what happens. They discount the amount of influence they have and don't walk in it. Right. 
Well, it's a, um, I think because we're such feelers, mm -hmm. our emotions get in the way. And so we don't feel qualified or we don't feel important or we don't feel known. And a lot of that can uh, distract and, and lie to us. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, so I took that that download that he gave me on the influence and I called my friend who is a script writer and who is a writer and a host of the insight scene. I said, and her name is Philippa Boo and she's just beautiful. And I said, Philippa, she actually co-authored the book with me nice. as well. I said, Philippa, um, you need to write this story. Listen, here's the information you've got to write. And she goes, no, uh, God gave that to you. You write. And I go, I, I don't write, Philippa. She goes, oh, yeah, you do. And it was another woman influencing me. I tell her all that all the time. You don't know how important it was for you to say those words, speak that life over me, yeah. to step into something that's new, something that's scary, something that I don't feel qualified for, right? Well, and how many times in our lives, and I don't know if you're like this, but it sounds like you probably are. I, I see things in people all the time, even when I just meet them. I, I feel like it's almost a weird sense beyond myself where someone can look from the outside and go, you know how talented you are, right? And you go, what? What are you even talking about? Like, you're amazing at doing that. And you're like, what? <laughs> I No, I had no idea. She saw that in you. And then she spoke that over you, which then in turn reinforced that in you and set you free in a sense to say like, well, I don't feel qualified, but that doesn't matter because somebody else somewhere is saying I am. I mean, right. God already knew you were, but he let her reinforce that with her words like, uh-uh, I might be a helper to you, but this is your thing. And that, right. that's incredible that you had that. And, and that's where like you see all those memes on social media, like don't be that woman that, you know, a real woman lifts other women up, not pulls mm -hmm. them down. I mean, and that's really true. I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing. So what is your definition of influence as you define it in the book or you've come to understand it? What I've come to understand is, is the power is there. And so when I wake up in the morning, I have that power to influence, to let me say change atmospheres. Ooh, yeah. That would be my definition of influence, mm. changing an atmosphere. So the importance is, it's not, it doesn't have to be on a grand scale, in lights, on a TV screen, uh, or a CEO of a business. It is right when I wake up in the morning. It's the hellos in the morning to my family. It's the circle that I move in. It's, that is your influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, it's, and it's so important to, to recognize it, stay aware of it. But the most important thing that I, I felt is, is it's, a power that can't be navigated by yourself. Um, so, so what do you mean by that? Ex expand what, on that a little bit. What I mean is it's too much power Ooh, to change yeah. an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so if you are, are guided by the world standards, you're not going to guide your circle of influence well. Mm -hmm. But when we lean back on the word and we have the truth of the word, right. And, and that's our north, our compass, exactly. then our influence will do more in one day than you could do in a lifetime when we lean back on that word. It's so amazing. And the other thing that as you're saying, saying that because it's power. So you look at men and the way that God made men is strength and power in the physical, right? right. They are the strong, powerful ones by design right? A, a, a man who is my same size, say the same weight and the same height, he's going to be stronger than me. Right. He just naturally is that way. So God's given them power in one way, but he's given us the power to change the atmosphere. Like if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody right. happy, right? Like that right there is the definition. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That's it in right. real life. Whether you believe in God or not, you know that if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. It's just the truth. So I think it's really it's really important. And, and again, the other thing that struck me, and you can talk about this too, is when we make it of the world, that's where pride comes in. And we've all met those really powerful women who are so full of themselves. They're just, ugh. like you don't want to root for them. 
because you're like, right. you're so prideful and you're so full of yourself. And, but when someone really walks in their influence in the truth and rooted in who God says you are and rooted in him, it's mm-hmm. a totally different game. Well, it's a completely different game because when trials and, and pain or issues come because they come to all of us, it all is us. that journey, mm-hmm. the, the down season, when you're using your influence of, of from your experience or from the world, things crumble quickly right. because they don't have the foundation that can make you keep standing when all else falls on the ground. When nothing and, makes but sense. This, right. Yeah. And the story does. So we take in the book, it's a 30 day devotional speaking into women's life. It's like five chapters on why you're an influencer and then 30 days continually speaking into you. Mm-hmm. And one of the chapters is on, we did a study on women, not biblical women and women in the world that have influenced nations like Cleopatra mm-hmm. who influenced culture mm-hmm. and a, created a civil war. Right. And, you know, and so you see, you can see through that study how much, what's important, mm-hmm. how we lead, how we got live in our day-to-day life. So exactly. it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, and I think it's great too that you, you've created a resource that doesn't, doesn't talk about it at the high level, just like blah, 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 this is what influence is, read this, and then people go, oh, that was interesting, and they wander away but literally giving them the opportunity to dig in and to understand what that is, what that looks like, where it is, how to use it, right? how to use it for good, how to use it, how you might use it for evil, you know, how you could be tempted because any type of power is a temptation. Right. You well, know, I'll, t- I'll tell you with our, uh, with my co-author, Philippa, we did a film in 2013 or 2014, um, eight days. It was an awareness campaign, uh, it's a feature film about uh, about sex trafficking, mm-hmm. and it follows the victim who gets mm-hmm. trafficked for eight days. Wow. I play the mom uh, trying to find the daughter. And oh at that point in my life, I had only watched Taken, mm-hmm. the movie Taken. That's pretty much my uh, awareness factor yeah. on on sex trafficking. So it changed my life in the, I'm a mom. I've got to fight for my street. Exactly. The people that live on my street, I've got to fight for my children. And I, we did an, a prevention campaign uh, for and went across the United States and international. But what happened was, is I talked to Philip and I said, the root, the root, we've got to get to the root of why our young teens or why people fall into these traps. Right. And it was because they didn't know their identity. Mm. And so that's the root of where we went with Woman of Influence. We wanted people to know what God says over you because exactly. people can see you and pick out your flaws all the time. It is easy for us to do. But what we don't see is that treasure, like you said, a treasure hunt. And you said this, you pull out, you can see things over people. And it is a gift from God to do the treasure hunting and pull out uh, what he says over them. Exactly. Exactly. And so that was our, our goal in, in Woman of Influence is for women to see what, what God speaks over them. And, and that's it. Like everything that I do on the show, every reason, every topic that we talk about can all be traced back to a problem in understanding your identity. So for me, you know, just in my story, growing, growing up in a home with an alcoholic parent, you know, I don't know if you have personal experience and you don't even need to answer, but for a lot of people listening, you know that that's very unstable because that person is unstable. And as I've moved away from, you know, my dad passed away when I was in my thirties and I'm almost 53 right now, but, um, you know, it's been maybe nearly 20 years since he passed away. So, you know, it's a little, I've worked through a lot of stuff, but I can look back and see that like much of my issues growing up into young adulthood, even into my thirties, even into my forties were rooted in the fact that my identity got jacked up Mm -hmm. because of his behavior and what I was trying to be for him. Because, because if I could just be better, if I could just not be so opinionated, if I could just not stand up to the bully as much, I, my life would be easier. But I, that wasn't my nature. I was being me, but me, me being me was getting the beat down. It, it happens to people all the time. And that is a way that the enemy beats down women. Because now that you've said that we are born to influence, 
it makes perfect sense that he would delay or cover up or distract us from what our true identity is. So we can't live in it. We can't walk in the fullness right. of what God says about us. You know, we're not connected to it. So it's, it, it's so much of what I talk about on the show. And I'm so glad you brought it up because again, rooted in wrong identity. Right. Right. And you know, one of the, the, the study that I found, which was, it's so unbelievable. Now I'm a word girl. I am a, the word of God and, and, I did a study in Song of Songs Mm -hmm. and a lot of time, I think in my generation, I I was brought up in church, but brought up that, you know, the Song of Songs was a marriage manual Mm -hmm. for the Christian woman, how, you know, and you don't understand it. It's an allegory. It never made sense. I was like, okay, I'll just skip over this one. And in essence, it is God speaking. God is the king and the Shulamite is us and it's God speaking to us. And he tells us, Hey, before you were born, I put a crown on your head and I'm watching you grow up. You're the lily in the valley. Mm. I write a song over you in the womb and you're the theme of it. You haven't done anything and you're already that person. So the hardest part for me growing up, even in church, and I come from a divorced family and major, I've gone through all of the issues and insecurity with a father in the same way that will destroy and distract your heart. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that a a Godfather would speak that over me, Exactly, you know? So to take his words as truth and say, you mean I acted this way? I had this behavior, but you're saying I'm yet lovely. Mm -hmm. Yet you lean over me and say, I enjoy you right where you are Mm -hmm. in your immature setting before you've even acted the way that I want you to act. I enjoy you and desire to know you. I, I like, I would just weep over these, this story of, this is our identity. This is the identity of the woman across from me that might be acting with bad behavior and Mm -hmm. something I don't like. And he's saying, but I'm calling you woman. Yeah. I'm calling you now. It's, I I mean, even as you were saying that, and I I guess because I'm very, very visual, it's, it's overwhelming to imagine. Like it's just overwhelming. And and if you grow up with a a father figure, a dad that is harsh and untrustworthy and, you know, really fallible and, and scary, your view of God tends to reflect that. This is the only father you know is your earthly right. father. And it, it, it's so hard for women. And I think that's a lot where it starts. Or you have a mother that's overbearing and she's not right. a, an example of a woman who knows she's loved by God. I mean, I mean, and it's a rare person who is because this is a fallen world and this is the enemy's whole deal. Let's just mess everybody up, create generational problems that just perpetuate themselves because people don't stop it. They don't, right. they don't stop and say, no, this doesn't have to be part of my story going forward and how much power and authority we have in that. And I have, uh, I have a book that I've been working on writing. Of course, there's a million things to do. So uh, my book is called The Posture of a Princess. And it's essentially that same, same idea of how would life be for us if we walked in our identity as a daughter of the king? How would our life, how would we talk to people? How would we take care of money? How would we take care of children? How would we have fears or not have fears? You know, Mm -hmm. how how would we do everything in that light of being his daughter, right? And, And the access that the daughter has to the king. She's not just another woman in the kingdom. She's the... Right daughter and you know how dads feel about their daughters right, right. so right. It, it's it, it's such a missing piece i think for so many women and to read that and to think and just allow them to think and to internalize that those words are meant for them i love you not for what you do but for who you are right and and that's exactly again what are women notorious for doing to earn their worth right it's impossible. It's a dead end street. You're never going to get there. It's sinking sand. That's so beautiful. I, um, you just reminded me of, of how you said, how would we walk? How would we walk knowing this? I, the, I think the first day's devotional in the book was you're God's favorite. And it's really mm-hmm. hard to embrace it is. 
because it, it, it just doesn't make sense. And, and I kind of tell a story, hey, in kindergarten, I really felt like I was a teacher's pet, really, because my mom was a teacher and stayed after. So I would stay after and I would help clean her chalkboard and, you know, kind of get her candy jar. So I felt like I was the special one. Right. Right. And so I, I held my, I felt like in school, in that particular class, I was the special one. Mm -hmm. So I carried myself a little higher. I walked a little more confident. Right. And it was the same way with if, if God's saying, Hey, you're the chosen among chosen, (laughs) you're the one I set you up to succeed. I timed your birth perfectly so yeah. you would make the greatest impact in this earth right now this Ugh. is your season and i said wouldn't you walk a little taller i'm Absolutely. your favorite yeah. i'm the one you enjoy me i i can i can make today even though my family may not enjoy me today <laughs> or they may be annoyed or or whatever the case is where i am you enjoy me I'm going to walk for, I'm going to change the way I speak. Absolutely. I'm going to step into this. Absolutely. I'm not going to be afraid to take that desire that's in my heart to write a book or to do something that I've never, I'm not qualified to do. I'm just going to, you know, close my eyes and jump because I'm your favorite. You're going to teach me. You're going to teach me and you're never going to leave me. You're going to walk alongside me or even slightly ahead of me. So you carve Mm -hmm. a little path for me to follow and, you know, trust that when I take that step, that it's, it's not going to be to the bottom of a cavern. You know, it's not going to be a crevasse. It's going to be you just, you know, making that step of that bridge of steps across it as we go. And I have to trust you in every step. But the more we understand how he loves us like that, the greater our trust can be and the more we can let go. Yeah. Right. And the more, yes. the more we can let go of the need to control. It's when we're scared that we need to control more, that we hold on more tightly. And I don't think anything is more, is more scary than kids, <laughs> right? And having kids. Hey, this is an amen. Right? Amen. Aaron, yes. Right? yes. I mean, there's nothing more in it. And I'm just going to tell you, cause your kids are younger than mine. It doesn't stop. But I personally, and I've talked about this on other shows, like I have personally come to this place where even a year ago I was so I would get myself just worked up into the worst tizzies if my kids didn't text me right away because I was already, I was already being afraid. I was making up stuff. There was no proof, right? There was no proof that anything was worrisome, but yet the enemy knew that he had a foothold because I'd allowed him to do this to me for so long that it just became this habit, this groove in my brain. If you want to talk about it, just like literally scientifically, I was in a habit. And the payoff was that I could work myself up into a frenzy. I could check all these different ways of, you know, check their phone records, you know, check whatever and, and try to locate them to prove I was right or prove I was wrong. But I literally had to just go exactly what you said. Like, I am not going to be afraid because whatever happens in the next minute, God is in the next minute and the next minute after that. I, the start of it was when my son, the Marine was in Afghanistan. Mm. That is the ultimate yes. of releasing your son or your child to God's care because there is no control that you have. I mean, literally it was praying Psalm 91 over him daily, continually by name. Right. Joshua, who sits in the shadow of the most high. Joshua will not be harmed. Joshua, you know, like just saying that over and over and, and, you know, physiologically, our brains can't think of two things at one time. So the enemy can't get in if I'm focused on speaking the word of God, the truth over my fear. Like that takes, it's louder than my fear. So I can't hear it anymore. That is so beautiful. I've got to, I've got to say this because I feel like the Holy Spirit just said, you know, when you were saying Joshua, and I think as a mom, I'm a, I have four babies. They're all different. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> ruining them. I always say, take, take the good stuff. Don't follow my bad stuff. Or, you know, and I tell the Lord, oh, just work it out. Let me you know, <laughs> take care of them. That kind of thing. My brother was also a Marine and also went to Iraq. And it, the same fears that you're, you're out of control, which were really out of control from the very beginning. All the time. But we think, you know, we mm-hmm. have this control. But what I was going to say is, 
the Holy Spirit says, I'm the God who sees. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, the story in the old Testament of, um, Hagar who has Ishmael with, Mm -hmm. um, um, Abraham Mm -hmm. and Abraham and Sarah send her off. And, and she leaves with Ishmael and goes off through the desert and she puts her son over on the side and says, you're going to die over here. I'm going to die over here because you know, we're out of water. I don't know what to do. We, we, right. We're kicked yeah. out. And God says, Hey God, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she, she meets God right there. And he said, and she says, you're the God who sees yeah. you're the God who sees everything. And it was so comforting in that one moment that we could be, I can claim like, Hagar, you're the God who sees where I am and you see where my babies Mm -hmm. are. Exactly. And I can just lean back and I can keep saying, like you said, Psalm 91 over my children, over my family, you're the God who sees. Exactly. Because I don't know through, I can't follow you 24 (laughs) hours a day. No. And, and that's not what we're supposed to do. So, you know, that's, that's another way of it's, it's another way of having the power to change the atmosphere, right? Influence. Because again, the speed of the leader is the pace of the pack. And if you look at a a marriage, a family, you've got the father and you've got the mother and the mother's a leader in one way and the father's a leader in another way. And they work together. And so, you know, there's times where as a mom, you got to calm everybody down. You got to get everybody organized. You got to get everybody focused on one task at hand, you know, (laughs) including the husband. This is what we're doing now. Everyone go pack your bag and bring it downstairs in 15 minutes, you know, and like, bam. But if the mom is walking in fear all the time, what is her influence going to look like? She's going to raise people that are fearful all the time or resentful or offended or name a word, right? right? Name a word. So, it works that way too, that we have an obligation when we understand and anyone who's listening now, you understand now you have influence. So you are no, you are no longer getting off the hook because you know, right. <laughs> awareness changes everything. You can't put awareness back. You can't be unaware once you are aware. <laughs> so now right. you have to know that you determine the atmosphere of who you are around, whether it's your, your office or your children or your group at the gym, like name a group you have influence and it's powerful. It's so powerful. Again, that can, that power can bring fear. So I all, I really want to hone in on the fact that the Holy Spirit leads, guides, and counsels you with his eyes upon you. So you can lean back with that power, Mm -hmm. you know, to, to navigate you through the day. But that's us being surrendered to that power, you know, us being surrendered. And that's where the, it's such a, so it's hard to understand if you want to have to wrap your brain around it, but you like, you have to use power to surrender power, but <laughs> that's the only way it works because he, again, he sees everything. He has all the power. He knows everything past, present, and future. He's in everything past, present, and future. So why wouldn't I trust him? I'm not in everywhere. I'm only in present and barely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, right. I have too many tabs open on my desktop, you know, like <laughs> sort of present, I guess. Right. But yeah. It's, it's, it's really, really crazy. Now I always like to have people have some actionable stuff to take away from this because it's all great conversation. It's all, all great information, mm-hmm. but without implementation, as we've talked about before on the show, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just, it's just stuff, just more words, just things float in and out of your ear. So if you were going to, counsel someone or teach someone or show someone the way to flip the switch, so to speak, and under, you know, walk in that influence properly as God has intended it. What would you say to them? How would you tell them to do that? You hit so many great points on the surrender and the embrace, but my, my very first step would be put your face in the word of God Mm. and, and, Make it be one of those day, you know, we CrossFit or we exercise every day. Make it be, even if it's a five minute or a 10 minute, make it be a consistent where you're just reading the word. That would be my first, because, because that's the North. Right. That's well, the exactly. compass. Exactly. So truth. if, so of course there's a lot to read in there. Is there right. a particular starting place? Because I mean, I know for me, like if you're, I know for me, sometimes it's easier to read a proverb or a shorter story or, or something like that. But where would you direct someone if it's not something that they're making a habit of at the moment? 
I would start in Psalms and Proverbs Mm -hmm. and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You'd get a little, you could read one of each and Mm -hmm. get a, get a story there. Um, the, the next thing is, is knowing, surrounding yourself with people that are encouraging and inspiring you. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly in this circle of negativity, it's, um, it's almost like a survival method to get out of it because you want to start seeing things differently. You want your perspective to see things like, for example, what I mean is my child has bad behavior and it's annoying. And I constantly, let's say I'm constantly screaming. Yeah. I'm a little fiery. So I'll, I'll, ah, you know, get big. Like I said, and instead take a moment to pull out the golden or like a treasure hunt Mm -hmm. And like changing my vocab, she's having bad behavior, but I say, this isn't you. You are called and anointed by God and your behavior is this. <laughs> so I'm changing that behavior. So I would tell myself if I'm wanting to change, who am I? Mm-hmm. And repeat what God says over me. And when I get up in the morning that I'm starting with knowing who I am. Yeah. yeah. I'm anointed. And he loves me. He says, yet I'm lovely. I had a bad day yesterday and I acted bad yesterday, but he says I'm lovely. So I'm going to believe it. I'm going to embrace it. And Lord, thank you for making me lovely, even though I don't feel like it or I'm acting like it today. I'm going to walk in it. Exactly. And there's, and there's variances in that. This is a lot of, you know, what I teach and what I do coaching with people is at the very top level of things, let's say at the level above the dirt, the plant that has come out from the top. That is your behavior. That is what everybody sees. That's what everybody knows of you. But the true you is the seed, right? And if you have a seed that is the wrong seed, like you, if you plant carrots, you're not going to harvest oranges. It's just not going to happen. It's not how it works. That's not how science right. works. And, and the same thing, your behavior tra- traces all the way back through your thoughts, through your beliefs, um, through your emotions, all the way back to the root of your identity. And that's the only thing of all of those that you are, everything else is a do. So, wow. so when you are rooted in a true identity, everything that goes up from there changes. Now, is it to say, like you said, I know who I am, but I'm having a bad day. I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. I'm sick. I have a headache. I have four kids, you know, bugging me and I'm to the end of myself and I lost it. Okay. Right. But then you go back and you say, okay, I'm sorry. I, I please forgive me. You know, I'm. I blew it, blew my top, you know, all of those things. But even in the moment that isn't so extreme like that, you can stop for a second and go, that's not who I am. That's not who I am. Right. I I always tell the story and I forgive me if you listen to this show all the time, you've heard this before, but it's applicable here. I woke up one night in the middle of the night and I had a stomach ache and I had a headache and I couldn't sleep in this because I had too much wine. And I was so annoyed and I was so done with it, that I literally said, I hate you, alcohol. I hate you. I hate what you do to my body. I hate everything. You are out. You are not part of my life anymore. Get out, stay out. Goodbye to the pit of hell where you belong, right? That's what I did. From that moment on, never even wanted it. And then there'd be times I'd be like, no, I'm literally like evaporated, evaporated. Praise God. But here's a crazy thing. That even when I'd walk by and I'd think out of habit, like, oh, I'm just going to have a glass of wine. I'm like, oh, I'm not. That's not what I do. That's not who I am. Like, I literally like went right to that. Like, that's not consistent with who I am. Who I am is a non-drinker. And that's not to brag or boast to say I'm awesome. Mm-hmm. I didn't do it. Right. My point is to say my identity around that is that I'm a non-drinker. Every behavior with that is consistent. I don't care what you do. Go ahead and drink. I don't care. It's not my deal. You're not my, you're not my monkeys or my circus. Do what you want. (laughs) You know what I mean? So that is really, that's really the thing is you can catch yourself in the moment and go, wait, that's not me. What am I doing? 180 degree turn. So beautiful. That's so important to speak that to yourself and speak it over people, Mm -hmm. over your friends. Hey, that's not who you are. You know who you are. You are. And, and just, just drench that. I like to say drench them with love drench mm-hmm. them with what God's with who God says they are. Exactly. People drench are always, your friends. People are always freaked out when I walk up to them and I say things like, wow, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get a sense of something that they are. That's awesome. 
You're like, you are such an amazing friend. And people are so blessed to know you. And they'll be like, wait, we just sat together on the plane. I'm like, I don't know. That's just what I'm getting right now. They're like, uh. You know, but I feel really compelled. God gave me a big mouth. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> I have a podcast. This is what I do. I talk for a living. But I really feel like that's part of it is just using those things. And whether you're blessing other people by speaking over them once in a while, when you feel it's, it's like you said, it's, it's the, the hidden treasure. And everybody wants to know that they have treasure, but they doubt it when they're only looking at it themselves. They don't even see it as treasure. How many people do you know that are wildly talented at art? And they're like, eh, that's no good. You're like, really? People pay $10,000 for this. Like, really? what? It's just me. It's just my little thing that I do. Well, I mean, case in point with me writing the book, I did not, that wasn't even a thought. When the Lord gave me that and gave me the download, I went to my friend who is a writer and said, this is your book. You need to write this. And she said, no, you write it. Mm. He gave it to you to do. And right then I thought, okay. <laughs> I mean, it was. All right. All right. We'll figure it out. Well, we'll figure it out. I'll get an editor to help me. <laughs> well, that's somebody else using their gifts. <laughs> yes, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. You do the brain dump. <laughs> but it, that's the same thing. It's someone pull, it's, it's pulling that gold out. I love that. When no one else can see it. Maybe even when I can't see it about myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always tell people too, like when my son, our youngest son was diagnosed with type one diabetes at nine and a half. Oh. And um, that's, you know, my brother was 11. It's just a stinky, there's, it's a stinky disease and it's horrible. And, you know, I pray all the time that somewhere God provides a cure, but for now it is what it is. And I remember just looking at him and he was such a, such a sweet, sweet boy and yet really, really um, tough, like capable of handling it, you know, cause he has a, like a, a really sweet, even countenance. He's not kind of crazy, you know, like wild. He's yeah. just real even and, you know, stuff steady, like that. steady. He's real steady. He's exactly like my husband, He's super steady. And I remember just telling him, I'm like, look, dude, here's the thing. There's only one way to get the impurities out of gold out. And that's by putting it through the fire. And I said, your diabetes is your fire and you're coming out on the other end is pure gold. This is what's happening for you. And, it's, and it sucks. Like nobody wants to go through that. Nobody wants to go through that change and have all the dross lifted. But you, God's going to do amazing things through you and through your life because you are just, because you're enduring it and you're doing a good job, you know, you're just doing it. So I believe in that. Everybody has gold. Everybody has gold. And we as believers and women, especially, I think that if we can create this world where we are continually noticing and, and, and saying that over each other, like not, Oh, your butt looks good in those jeans. Like, that, <laughs> you know, like that's good. And we like, that's that. good too. <laughs> Anything related to beauty. Of course we love knowing that we're beautiful. And, and I think that's awesome too. Like yeah. I say that about my friends. I mean, I have all these workout friends and I'm like, I say this stuff. That's, I'm the crazy one. I'm like, right. It's got a nice butt. You know, my husband's like, right. what are you talking about? I'm like, She's an athlete. She's got an athlete's butt. You're like, <laughs> awesome. But I mean, we really need to do that. And I think that's the foundation for how we as women can walk into our own influence when we're being encouraged in our influence and we're encouraging others. Right. Right. It's, it's such a beautiful thing. I, I just love it. Well, Katie, this has been a super treat. And I love to, because it just kind of came up in the last couple of weeks and we just, you know, did this really quick. And I'm so appreciative that you took the time to spend with me today and to get a chance to know you and for my audience to get to know you and just know if you're listening and you want to know more about Katie and get a hold of her book and, you know, check out her social media stuff that she's doing. All the links are going to be in the show notes. And the best way to get there is boldbravesassyshow.com and the latest episode will be up there. So if you're listening to this, that'll be the latest episode, or you'll just have to look for Katie Walker. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're not already subscribed on iTunes or downloading through iTunes, I really encourage you to do that. It's super easy. Then you can take it anywhere you go. And of course, I'd always love your reviews because if you didn't know, when you review it on iTunes, iTunes pushes it out to more people. So that means we can reach more people, change more lives and encourage more women so that they can live the unapologetically confident life that God designed for them. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you again, Katie. And I hope that you'll join me again on the show. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.